good afternoon and welcome to Shriners Hospitals for Children in Greenville, South Carolina. My name is Chuck Pittman. I serve on the International Board of Trustees and I'm an honored and humbled emeritus member of this Board of Governors. I come here today to bring you greetings from your Imperial Potentate, James R. Smith, from Ben Hur Shriners in Austin, Texas, and also our Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Jerry Gant from Arabia Shriners in Houston, Texas. And on behalf of your joint boards, we wanna welcome you and thank you for your continued support of Shriners Hospitals for Children in Greenville, South Carolina. To all the potentates, the nobility, the divan members, and especially those road runners who take the time to bring that precious cargo day in and day out to this facility, we wanna say thank you. As we look towards our 2035 vision of our history and our future, all decisions are made predicated on five basic points. First of all, quality of care. What is the best quality of care for that child? Secondly, we wanna make sure that we're compliant with all regulatory agencies, both foreign and domestic, so that we can be able to treat children worldwide. Third, what is the need of the child? Is our treatment of scope within the parameters that we can make sure to treat that child at the highest level of quality? Next, we wanna make sure and protect the brand. The brand of Shriners Hospitals for Children is about to celebrate its centennial 100 years of transforming the lives of children worldwide. That is a critical element in each decision that we make. Last, but certainly not least, our forefathers set forth an endowment fund that allows us to do what we do, regardless of the family's ability to pay. And with your contributions and support, we will continue to grow our endowment fund for the future. You know, Shriners Hospitals for Children has the most amazing care anywhere. We've been transforming lives in the past, presently, and certainly will do so in the future for the next 100 years. So once again, on behalf of your joint boards, your board of directors, your board of trustees, and your executive staff, we'd like to wish all safe travels, be safe, stay healthy, and may God bless Shriners International and Shriners Hospitals for Children. Thank you for your time. Hello from one of the most incredible places in the entire southeastern United States. I'm here in the Child's Playroom at Shriners Hospitals for Children in Greenville, South Carolina, and I am here to welcome you to the 2021 Shriners Days. My name is Tim Ludwig, and I have the great honor of being the Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Shriners Hospitals for Children in Greenville, South Carolina. Usually the second Friday and Saturday of March, we have Shriners Days here in our facility, and we welcome up to 800 of our nobles and ladies, special guests, patients, and their families into this for a great day of fun and fellowship, incredible food from our dietary staff, and lots of information that is shared from our administrators and our chief of staff. But unfortunately, because of COVID, we can't do that this year, so we're doing a little something different. We're going to be having a virtual Shriners Days. So I want to talk to you for just a moment about the incredible team of physicians and nurses and therapists and nursing assistants and lab techs and phlebotomists and pharmacists and pharmacy techs and all of the clerical staff and the quality people that we have here uh, that have worked so incredibly hard in such a difficult year dealing with COVID. Through all of that, I still believe that this is probably our finest hour. You know, when COVID was first upon us, our hospital followed the CDC guidelines and stopped elective procedures. We still did some procedures. We still had some clinic visits. We had some physical therapy clinics, but we tried to limit those. And through all of that, uh, we did uh, general examinations that were appropriate to perform through telehealth. So our leadership devised a plan to socially distance people who normally worked close together to lessen the risk of COVID and, 
And our infection prevention and quality management folks, they, they developed how to safely continue to operate utilizing CDC guidelines to include screenings for everyone that comes into our building. Those efforts are still ongoing. For three months, visits and surgeries were limited. Once the, the CDC relaxed their guidelines, our facility ramped back up and began seeing more patients in clinics and continuing more surgeries. In a few minutes, Dr. Wattenberger, our Chief of Staff, will share some numbers with you to show you just how well our physicians and staff work together to come roaring back. Now please allow me a moment to talk about our Board of Governors. Our Board of Governors are the governing body of this facility. A noble of in good standing can be nominated for the Board of Governors, and then our nominating committee they put them through a rigorous uh, examination and uh, have interviews with them. And then they are recommended, if they are recommended by the nominating committee to the full board, then, they're, then they are voted on. The initial appointment for a board of governor to our facility is three years, and then they can be reappointed for two more three-year terms. Many of our members first served as associate members of our board of governors before being elected to the full board. Our Board of Governors is currently comprised of 19 members from 14 different Shrine Temples, and we have six associate members. Board of Governor members give freely of their time and many talents to support our mission and provide direction. Please allow me to introduce our 2021 Board of Governor members. They are Dennis Berry from ACA, Clyde Bowie, A. Lee Temple, Brandon Brown, who is also our treasurer from Cahaba. Timothy Brown from Hejaz. Kenny Carter, Jericho. Mike Cook from Oasis. Gordon Buddy Ellis from Omar. Peter Greg Gregerson, who is also our vice chairman from Zamora. Gary Huffman from Kazim. William Danny Huggins, who serves as our secretary from Yarab Temple. Jeff Johnson from Alcazar, Sherwood Kaiser from Hejaz, Edward Jimmy Litchford from Kazim, Richard Redman from Akka, Bobby Simmons from Al Shaha, Keith Webb from Khadiv, John Everett Whitmore from Hejaz, and James Terry Wofford from Alcazar. We also have six associate members on our board in 2021. And they are Billy Ackerman from Hejaz, Lance Carpenter from Jamil, Ralph Buddy Grayson from A. Lee, Robert Bob Hoblet from Amran, Thomas Holt from Yarab, and Ricky Leftwich from Kazim. Once a Board of Governor member serves at least nine years, they can be nominated for induction as an emeritus member. At the end of 2019, we had three members who were elected by the joint boards to emeritus status. They were Dennis English from Aka Shrine, J.R. Dude Hannon from Hejaz Shrine, Bill Fenners from Omar Shrine. And at the end of 2020, Ron Mitchum, who was our previous chairman of the Board of Governors from Jamil Shrine, was elected to the level of emeritus status. Our Greenville facility is so fortunate to have almost 30 emeritus members many of which were very active and are still very active and serve on multiple committees. Their knowledge and experience is invaluable and they contribute much to our organization. Meanwhile, our temples continue to contribute financially in very meaningful ways. Take a look.
Everything that we do and all of the decisions that are made within Shriners Hospitals for Children is for the benefit of the children and families that we serve and for the potential and future children that we hope to serve. Shriners International was established more than 150 years ago and the very first Shriners Hospital opened 99 years ago. Each year as a system, we care for nearly 150,000 children and we provide that care regardless of their ability to pay. The support that our fraternity provides Shriners Hospitals for Children in Greenville, South Carolina is life changing. But please don't take my word for it. Let's take a look at and listen to Crystal as she talks about her child Noah and how Greenville Hospital has provided care for them. Here we got census Shriners um, right away. The people at the front desk gave him little toys. My daughter was with us. They made him feel comfortable and special. And um, we got the appointment set up because he had scoliosis, pretty severe. We knew he was gonna have to do the HALO program ahead of time. So I kind of knew a lot of things before we even came here that it was gonna be a process. But, you know, down to child life came in. We walked around the hospital. We met the nurses and all the surgeons. It was like, made us feel very comfortable coming to Shriners. I knew right away that this is where he needed to be. This was the best place for him. Even he, being terrified of the surgery, wanted to come to Shriners. And when they put the halo on, it went very smoothly. He woke up, little headache. He was up running around the next day. And he made friends here, lifelong friends. Him and Ethan, a little boy he had met, are still in contact. Um, they would run through the hospital with their halos attached. It was watching the life come back into him. Um, and it, it was like in, before my eyes, watching him change. My son's coming back. He straightened. He went, when he went in for the, I met Dr. Wattenberger the very first day we came. He sat down with us. He, it wasn't like he was in a hurry like most doctors. He made me feel very comfortable. I knew, like, I always tell him he's like an angel, like God sent him into our lives because he has been a blessing, what he done for him. I was so scared. He comforted me. He walked me through exactly the whole process because I, I have a very bad anxiety. I was terrified. You know, he's my only son. I was scared something bad would happen. But it was a, a miracle seeing how he is now. His energy came back, his appetite's more, he's doing better in school. And it was just, um, Dr. Wattenberger is, you know, I told him after his surgery, if we didn't have to worry about COVID, I would have kissed him. <laughs> I was so happy to see, he woke up from surgery and he was like, it was like, uh, because I was terrified seeing him on the bed, but it was uh, just amazing. And he was up walking, now he's running, and you would never know he even had surgery. No more pain, it's just been amazing. And I would love to say thank you to the whole hospital, down to the housekeeping staff, to the nurses, you know, the physical therapist, the child life, the surgeons, the people who make this possible. Because I would have probably lost my son if it wasn't for this, this hospital. You know, I, I could tell that it was, his spine was pushing on his heart and his lungs, you know. And it was, I just, all I could say is thank you. Thank all of you for making this possible for these kids. What an incredible testimonial. Thank you so much, Crystal, for sharing your story and entrusting Shriners Hospitals for the care of Noah. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Michael Wattenbarger, who is our Chief of Staff, and he is here to share some incredible information with you. You know, seeing that video about Noah really brings back um, the year of uh, 2020 and how we dealt with the pandemic. Um, 
And, uh, you know, if you look back on what we did or what we knew a year ago, it's really amazing um, how little we knew. So we made the decision in consultation with um, our executive leadership team and with the Board of Governors, specifically Tim, on uh, March 16th to close down to basically stop elective operations of the hospital. And the, the, how quickly we moved to make the hospital safe for our employees and patients, I'm very proud of and very proud of how everybody worked together to make that happen. Um, by Wednesday of that week, we had uh, come up with a visitation policy. By um, Friday of that week, you know, just four days in, we had, um, you know, uh, moved out furniture, uh, set up social distancing everywhere. Um, and when I remember very clearly Vicki, who was a cashier, asking me probably a week into the pandemic if we should wear masks. And at that time, the CDC said, no, we shouldn't wear masks, and now we're supposed to wear two masks. So just the uncertainty of this whole situation and how we reacted is really amazing. And I, when I say we, it's not just our hospital, it's really you know, the global um, uh, community. And so I thought I'd use this time to just kind of reflect back on some of the things that we went through to make sure to make this uh, hospital safe for our patients and our visitors. So early on, we broke up into three, uh, we, the medical staff broke up into three different teams, but we, in all clinical areas and really administrative areas, we broke up into teams where we had one team offsite and one team onsite. That way, if somebody were exposed, we didn't lose a whole team. So if we, for instance, if somebody, uh, if we didn't do that, if somebody in the OR um, was positive, we would lose the ability to do uh, surgery. And so they thought that was very, very helpful. Early on, we had to, um, when, when we did that, we had to take mandatory PTO, which the um, uh, corporate Shriners was very generous um, in uh, giving that back to most everybody. Throughout this process, we had to adapt as the information changed and what happened. So when we first started screening our patients, we screened them downstairs uh, in the garage and then we went to screening them in the um, auditorium and now we're, we have a much more efficient uh, process which uses about a third of the people that we screen them when they come in and so we're very uh, pleased with our ability to adapt to this and just really proud of our staff and the great ideas that they came up with during this time. But again our emphasis was always on keeping our patients and our staff safe. We take care of some medically fragile kids that if they were to get COVID, um, it could be devastating. They'd be high risk for dying. And so when Noah, one of the hardest decisions we had to make early on in this process was whether to bring Noah in uh, for surgery. At that time, this was all new. Um, his halo, we put it on end of March and we're making the decisions. And I could tell you the care managers that took care of him, they're primary, they were very uncomfortable with doing it. Um, we were in conversations with uh, Prisma next door of how we could help them and if they were become overrun. At that time, they were building tents outside of their, um, out of their ER in case they had to put in people on those like they were doing in Italy. And we were really torn on whether we should bring um, Noah into the hospital. And finally, Robin LaCroix next door, who's a chair of pediatrics, a longtime consultant here, um, and infectious disease doctor said, you know, probably the safest place for him to be is the hospital because you're um, screening everybody, everybody's going to be masked. And, you know, with that, we had um, uh, peace at bringing him in, it, with, even with all of that uncertainty. And so all the processes that we set up, you know, have made it safe for our patients and our staff. And um, I'm very proud of the fact of our team all working together to keep our patients safe throughout this pro process. Um, you know, and again, our ability to adapt and work as a team to make these things work, um, the resiliency of our uh, staff members uh, during this time. This time has been incredibly stressful for all of us uh, personally and professionally, and yet we have uh, really come together as I've never seen it before. I think the leadership team um, and everybody in the hospital has. I think one of the uh, really neat things that's happened is um, the conversation between corporate and the hospitals. Uh, we have a, a corporate leadership call initially every Friday and then every other Friday where all the um, leadership teams of the hospital, so the DPCSs, which are the um, you know, nurse executives, uh, chief financial officers, and the administrators and the chief of staff uh, are all there hearing the same information. So we were really able to learn from ourselves um, and you know, make this a safe process uh, for everybody. 
Uh, you know, during that time, I, I think that, you know, Bill, I'm sure, shared with, or Bill will share with you um, some information about our metrics and how good they were. And I thought it'd be helpful to just share some graphs with you of, of what that six week period looked like from the time we stopped till we restarted. We basically went down to almost no clinical volume. We just saw patients that absolutely had to be seen. And, um, you know, so if you look at the graphs, which I think they'll put now, if you look at the uh, operating room, we basically, you know, stopped uh, March uh, 16th or 17th, and then, you know, didn't resume full operations until um, in mid-May. The OR was actually easier to bring online because we maybe operate on 25 to 30 patients a week. In the outpatient, we may see 350 patients a month. So that's a lot of patients. Remember, they used to come in with four or five family members. Now we have to only bring them in uh, with one family member. And so, um, and just physically how it's laid out, we had more trouble and weren't able to um, to bring everybody back on. So our numbers in outpatient clinic would probably hit 70 or 80%. But one of the really neat things, and one of the things I'm incredibly proud of Shriners for doing this, and this is a corporate initiative, they stood up a telehealth program, which we call Fast Track Video Visits, in an incredibly short period of time. So um, about a month after that uh, started, we had a uh, venue, which wasn't perfect, but it was unbelievable they could do that a month at the time, we had telehealth visits. So the telehealth visits actually started filling in the gaps where um, we weren't able to see um, see our outpatients and it's been an incredible tool uh, for our patients you know imagine these patients coming from a six state area driving six or seven hours to see us um, well a lot of times we operate on them we just need to check in with them afterwards and so we're saving them a day visit we're saving a road runner in many cases a road runner and so these telehealth visits we all see as being part of uh, our business or how we're going to do business going forward so it's really one of the neat things to come out of the um, the pandemic uh, during this time you know we have uh, kept up all of the work in our signature programs we treat over 85 uh, orthopedic conditions um, our signature programs such as spine uh, you know we put on the metacast which are the casts you put on the little babies with scoliosis uh, we're one of the largest centers um, in the uh, country that does that by volume our halo patients you heard from uh, Noah. We also, for our spine, continued with our scoliosis-specific exercises. Limb deficiency the, um, with the uh, prosthetics and orthotics uh, led by Dr. Westbury, our arthroposis uh, program led by uh, Dr. Heyer, hip preservation led by Dr. Um, Geddes, and um, also the cerebral palsy in our tone clinic. And, uh, our multidisciplinary clinics with spina bifida continue to be strong. So during this time, we were able to um, really keep our clinical operations going, keep our patients stay safe, and uh, are very proud of the work and very appreciative of all the roadrunners, all the support we've gotten from uh, our board and from the local temples and from the Shriners uh, for helping to make this happen, for helping us to continue to do the uh, great work that we do because of your help. Um, you know, and in closing, I just think that the, um, I think the, there are so many positive things, as I said, that have come out of this. I think the ability to change quickly, to try new things, um, to if these things don't work, to, to say, that's okay, let's try something else. Um, that's really created a new uh, culture, I think, within our hospital and really throughout the system. I think our relationships for all the hospitals with corporate has gotten much better, and I've heard for many times uh, John McCabe um, saying that as well. I think that's really brought us together as a system, and so uh, while 2020 was a year like no other, we remain committed to the compassionate care of our children in a very safe environment. Uh, very proud of our work and very thankful for everything you've done to make that happen. And now I would like to introduce um, our hospital uh, administrator, Bill Munley, who will give you some more updates on our work. Thank you, Dr. Wattenbarger. As he mentioned, I'm your administrator, and I've been here three years now on this incredible journey. The mission is unsurpassed here at Shriners Hospitals for Children in Greenville, and I hope to be with you many more years. Right now, I'd like to give you a little bit of an overview of what we achieved in 2020 and give you a little hint of where we're heading in the future. In 2020, we had 3,587 referrals, even during a worldwide pandemic. 
We did over 14,000 outpatient encounters, including 1,700 telehealth visits. We had a combined number of 1,084 inpatient and outpatient surgical procedures, and we did over 15,000 rehab procedures and radiology exams. We completed 749 motion analysis center studies, and we did 3,715 custom prosthetics on orthotics. And most importantly, we raised our average daily census to 3.2. If you remember in the past, it was as low as 1.0. On this slide, you'll see that we did very well being self-sufficient. We had a draw on the endowment of only $1,490,000, which was the second lowest draw in the system for 2020 and the lowest in Greenville's history. We exceeded our goal by 8%. So as you can see, we're 94% self-sufficient. Looking at the past year, we had our HALO treatment program expanded. There's two and sometimes three HALO patients in our facility at once. We also looked at our adolescent idiopathic scoliosis program and formalized that. And we secured two insurance contracts, one with a company called MAP, or Medical Advocate Program, and one with our affiliate system PRISMA for a clinically integrated network or what they call a CIN which allows us to be an equal partner in their network. We also received some zero harm awards from the South Carolina Hospital Association. The biggest one was that we went 84 months with no MRSA infections. That's incredible for a healthcare facility to go seven years without that infection. And our outcome measures exceeded all national averages. Most of them were in the top quartile. For patient satisfaction, we had a tremendous year. In fact, we once again received the Press Ganey Excellence Award for Inpatient Experience. And we've received that award six out of the past eight years. As you can see by these charts, our targeted scores, the raw numbers are out of a total of 100. And we had 97.7 in ambulatory surgery, that put us in the 94th percentile compared to 1,700 peer group facilities. We also, in our medical practice, had a score of 94.3, or that's a raw score out of 100, which put us in the 78th percentile compared to 1,300 other facilities. But the greatest achievement was in our inpatient services and our rehabilitation. We had raw scores of 96.1 and 96.8, and that placed us in the 99th percentile for both of those categories. And thanks to our roadrunners, we continued to have patients transported back and forth from our hospital. And even during the pandemic, they logged almost 500,000 miles. That was on, on total trips of 2,295, with the greatest number of miles coming from Sudan at 65,000, and the greatest number of trips from Karbala at 263. In terms of donor development, we far exceeded our goal. We processed a lot of gifts in 2020, totaling $6.6 .6 million. That beat the previous year's record of $6.4 million. Thanks to Paul Finelli and his team in donor development, we saw an increase of 10,000 individual gifts versus the prior year. And that was a 37% increase in total donations versus 2019. We rolled out a brand new marketing and communications plan. This plan focuses on digital platforms like social media, internet banners, ads, streaming services, and so on, with telehealth a focus for reaching outer regions of our catchment area and injury care targeting the closer radius. We also broadcast a commercial during the ACC championship game, which reached 154,000 households in Greenville, Spartanburg, and Asheville. And we've also come up with clever mailers to send back to referring physicians called Remember Me. And it has the picture of their patient that they referred to us on the front and a little bit of information inside. Looking at a transition to the future, we want to expand that marketing plan to outer states. We want to increase inpatient surgeries and our average daily census. We want to capitalize on that Prisma clinically integrated network and the medical advocate program aligning us with other healthcare entities. We also want to investigate other network opportunities like new satellite clinics. We want to implement new treatment protocols 
like cerebral palsy, early mobilization, a bone health protocol, and a medial patellofemoral ligament protocol where actually these children with torn ligaments become inpatients here in Greenville. Also in this transition to the future, we want to expand telehealth opportunities, increase outpatient rehabilitation, open some clinics managed by physician assistants, continue with our research initiatives. We have two already with Georgia Tech and a third in the pipeline, explore managed care bundled payment insurance arrangements, and apply for the American College of Surgeons certification. This final slide shows you a lot of the numbers that I just went over, but there's three more that I want to bring your attention to. First, in the far upper left corner, you see that we treat over 85 orthopedic conditions. In the lower left-hand corner, we have seven surgeons with over 150 years of combined experience. And finally, in the upper middle, you see how many patients we served from 25 states and 13 countries. Thank you for taking the time to join us during this special virtual Shriners Days. As you know from the past, for those of you that have visited us, we usually end with a tour of the facility. Since we're not able to do that this year because of COVID, we'd like to share with you a virtual tour video after Tim's closing remarks. I'd like to thank our incredible staff, physicians and leadership, as well as the Shriners and the public who support us. Without your help, we couldn't do what we do. We hope to see you all again here in Greenville in 2022. Thank you all for joining us on this 2021 rendition of Shriners Days. We know that it was not ideal and we would have loved to have had you here in our facility, but due to COVID, obviously we just couldn't do that. However, as a teaser, we are working really hard and we're very hopeful that we're going to be able to have some kind of on-site event later this year. Perhaps a Walk for Love, perhaps an abbreviated Shriners Days. Stay tuned, you'll hear more. Again, thank you for joining us and thank you for all of the support that you give to Shriners Hospitals for Children and those that we serve. I'm reminded of a quote from Margaret Mead. Margaret Mead, who is, who is an American writer and anthropologist, once said, never doubt that a small group of concerned, dedicated individuals can change the world. Indeed, it's, it's the only thing that ever has. Shriners Hospital is for children and all everybody associated with Shriners Hospital is for children is changing the world one child at a time. Thank you for being with us. May God bless you, and may God bless Shriners Hospitals for Children. Hi, I'm Sydney, and before I was a contestant in the Miss South Carolina pageant, I was a patient right here at the Shriners Hospital for Children, Greenville. My buddy Grayson and I, and a few of our other friends, would like to thank you for joining us on this tour and show you a glimpse into how this hospital has truly changed our lives. Are you ready, Grayson? Let's go! Since 1927, Greenville Shriners Hospital has cared for children with scoliosis, spina bifida, cerebral palsy, limb deficiencies, and other orthopedic conditions. We wanted to take you on a special tour today so you can experience the love that has rescued so many children throughout the years. Referred to by one patient's mother as a hospital inside of a playground, children entering Greenville Shriners Hospitals are greeted not by fluorescent lights and tile floors, but rather safari animals and a running waterfall. Just as the staff are each trained to offer care specifically for pediatric patients, the environment of the hospital thoughtfully serves to make kids feel at ease and welcome. A playground outside is custom made for patients and siblings who have extra energy to spend, while the kids zone upstairs is complete with pool tables and games. While the trusted surgeons addresses each child's physical needs, the child life department addresses the patient's emotional needs. They know the best prescription for a kid is fun. Now let's meet Jaren so she can tell you how the Shriners Hospital has personally affected her life. Hi, my name is Jaren. I was diagnosed with scoliosis at the age of 11, and now that I'm 18, I've had countless x-rays. With the EOS machine, I received 90% less radiation than I would with the standard x-ray. While traditional x-rays are available, 
the state-of-the-art EOS sets the hospital apart. Based on a Nobel Prize winning invention in physics, the EOS machine enables doctors to receive the clearest images, all while exposing the patient to minimal radiation. Walking, running, and jumping are three things that all kids should be able to enjoy. Greenville Shriners Hospital for Children likes to help kids be kids, and our prosthetics and orthotics department makes that possible. Meet our all-star Brandon and the team that helps him shoot for the stars. Hi, I'm Brandon. When I was six years old, I got really, really sick and it caused a paralysis on my right side. But thanks to the Shriners Pops Department, I was able to get this brace that will help me play basketball and do all the things I love. They even made me a brace for the beach and the pool. That way I can keep up with my brothers. Prosthetics and orthotics, custom designed to fit the personality and needs of each individual patient, is no further away than the first floor of the hospital. Certified by the American Board for Certification in Orthotics and Prosthetics, staff stay up to date on the latest techniques. The Shriners Hospital is an incredible place, not only because of our excellent staff, but our specialty clinics that we offer to our patients. Allow me to introduce you to Maximo to hear about his experience in the motion analysis lab. Coming to a hospital that had this level of technology and uh, knowing that was going to allow the doctor to have a better understanding exactly what needed to be done for his surgery. Uh, we had been at other facilities and this is the, the one that had the uh, motion analysis lab. Uh, overall, we've just been overwhelmed with the support and the love we've received at this facility. Specialized motion capture cameras monitoring the movement of the child paired with sensors to gauge muscle activity and floor plates to measure foot pressure all combined to help a multidisciplinary team come up with a plan for care that's nothing short of life-changing. Receiving outstanding rehabilitation services at Greenville Shriners Hospital is pivotal in helping kids build independence and confidence. Through hard work, physical and occupational therapy transforms the lives of children like Angela. Hi, I'm Lashana and this is my daughter Angela. When she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy, we wanted to find the best care possible. We came to Greenville Shriners Hospital where we received excellent occupational and physical therapy that made it possible not only for Angela to be able to walk, but also run. Equipped with a skilled team of occupational and physical therapists, the rehabilitation department is located in the heart of the hospital on the second floor. Here, inpatient and outpatients alike come to heal from short-term injuries as well as overcome the effects of long-term conditions. The outpatient clinic at the Greenville Shriners Hospital is a busy place. Here, not only do patients with complex conditions come for regular checkups, but it's also home to the injury care clinic, where strains, sprains, and fractures are seen on short notice. Meet Jocelyn, who is grateful for the quick care that she received. One day, when I was playing soccer, I hurt my ankle. The very next day, my mom got me an appointment at Shriners Hospital. They x-rayed me and told me that it was just a simple sprint. So then they gave me a boot to wear. And, and then in two weeks, I was back playing soccer. Whether it's a girl who needs only one appointment or a boy who may need many, the outpatient clinic serves countless needs. Here, patients with complex conditions come for routine checkups with their surgeons, and the continuum of trusted care continues. Greenville Shriners Hospital is home to one of the largest and most trusted teams of pediatric orthopedic surgeons in the Carolinas. They are skilled and compassionate. How do I know this? As a scoliosis patient, I underwent a spinal surgery right here at the age of 12. Because of the excellent care that I received, I went on to stand tall as I competed in the Miss South Carolina pageant and later accepted my college diploma. My story is just one example of a dream that came true thanks to the Greenville Shriners Hospital. That concludes our tour, but the work to change countless more lives continues.